Yesterday, in response to a question from the Wild Rose Energy Shadow Minister, we heard the Premier's lengthy, surprising point of view on Alberta exporting bitumen for refining and sale to overseas markets. It was clear that she was not in favour of pipelines going south. Her opinions, I worry, might even give President Obama more excuses to block the Keystone Pipeline. Will the Premier please clarify her position and assure Albertans that it is not the policy of her government to oppose the Northern Gateway Pipeline, the Keystone Pipeline, or any other pipeline? All Albertans deserve a world-class health care system, and we want to help the government get there. But many remember last time Alberta centralized health services all we got was ballooning wait times and packed emergency rooms. In response to this, the Health Minister announced a plan to shrink wait times and provide more long-term spaces. Can the Minister tell Albertans what this plan will actually involve, besides throwing billions more at top-heavy Alberta Health Service bureaucrats? As a mom, I know there's no shortage of issues facing women across the province. Women fleeing the streets need to access need access to resources to be protected from violence and to build new lives. The people in Airdrie are without a women's shelter. We want to help create solutions, but the one thing we don't want is a bigger bureaucracy. How can Albertans be sure this new department will be more than just funneling money to a top-heavy bureaucracy? Last week, a major concern was raised at a joint meeting of the Mayors and Reeves of Southern Alberta regarding sustainable, con sustainable continued support for communities through MSI funding. The members are worried because they've received no updated information from this new government regarding any funding promises since those proposed by the former PC government. To the Minister, considering that the amount of MSI given to communities has traditionally been communicated prior to the fall when they prepare their budgets for the following year, will you commit now to maintaining the MSI funds promised by the last government for 15 to 16. Mr. Speaker, the first letter the Wild Rose sent to the Premier was about seniors care in Fort McMurray. Seniors care is an issue everywhere, but nowhere is it more prevalent than in Fort McMurray. No other community our size has gone this long without a long-term health care facility. We wrote the Premier asking her to delay the tender for an ill-conceived seniors project in Fort McMurray and to listen to the community. Is the Premier prepared to give the residents of Fort McMurray the facility that they need and deserve. For two days now, we've asked the Premier some very important questions about pipelines. For some time, market access for our energy products have been the top international and intergovernmental issue for Alberta's government. You're the minister for that. Wild Rose has always been helpful and supportive on this file, as we are on all files. <laughs> Can the Premier confirm that building more pipelines to move Alberta's energy to new markets remains this province's top intergovernmental and international priority. Yesterday I asked the Minister what her plan was for helping those who will lose their jobs due to the dramatic increase to minimum wages. The answer was less than fulsome, I might add. But what's really troubling me is that in a meeting with the Canadian Federation of Small Businesses, this government told them that they had, no, they had done no economic impact analysis on the potential effects of this policy. Minister, bluntly put, why are you putting thousands of jobs at risk without even doing the necessary research first? It's hard to believe, but it's already been two years since one of the worst floods in Alberta history devastated homes and communities right across the province. While Rose just wants to help the government get this right. I couldn't help but notice the NDP candidate in my riding had very little to say during the election campaign. I'm hoping the minister can clear this up. What is your government's plan to address flood mitigation that helps communities right across the province? When pressed for spending details on their mini-budget, the government provided five different numbers. These five numbers came in the span of just 24 hours. The good news is that every time I ask, the number gets smaller. If I keep asking, maybe we'll have a balanced budget by the end of the session. <laughs> Will the Minister of Finance tell us, is his new spending $1.8 billion, $1.1 billion, $776 million, $682 million, $624 million, or all of the above? We've heard the Premier say she understands that we need pipelines. That's brilliant. And we want to help, but the government has a lot of trouble supporting pipelines. Heading west, 
or south and has sent mixed signals about pipelines heading east. Let me be clear, a new report shows that without new pipelines, Western Canada will lose on $100 billion over the next 15 years. Can the Energy Minister explain why her government is dismissing this $100 billion priority for Albertans? This government has presented an interim supply bill without information about how the funds will be used. The budget will not be presented until the school year has started. School authorities are holding back their funding for hiring and supports until they have some clarity about the budget. And this crisis in educational planning has been brought on by this government. That's right. To the Minister of Education, what is the Minister of Education going to do to ensure that educational funds are Uh, between 2013 and 2014, the former government downloaded funding of bridges to rural municipalities. Uh, one of uh, Little Bow's uh, counties uh, has uh, about 200 bridges, of which 11 are within one year of their useful life. Rural Alberta is, in fact, responsible for 75% of roads and 60% of bridges. While Rose's 1010 plan would make sure that municipalities have resources for these projects, to the Minister, is this government aware of this quickly growing problem facing our rural communities? A couple of days ago, I stood on the steps of the Legislature with colleagues from all parties. We heard stories from parents who lost their children in provincial care. I can't imagine the heartache, and I know that everyone in this House wants to improve how we protect our kids. We want to work with the government to improve the system and we want to know, we want to be able to tell parents the mistakes of the past that we learned from. Will the minister plan to improve and strengthen protective services for children in care? I will be tabling a petition today signed by thousands of Albertans urging the Minister of Education to reverse the implementation of the inspiring education doctrine. While Rose has opposed the fads and inspiring education since the beginning, will the Premier assure Albertans that this government also rejects the failed approach of inspiring education? Over the past couple of days, we've heard from the NDP that the PCs are to blame for layoffs and lack of investor confidence because they didn't diversify the economy. So to the Finance Minister, can he explain exactly how does raising taxes help diversify our economy? Here, here.